Let's work some problems now that use conditionals. So we're given this problem where we would need to prompt the user for their age, and if the, if the age is greater than or equal to zero but less than 20, we print that the person is young. If the age is greater than or equal to 20 but less than 60, we say they're of middle age. And if their age is greater than 60, then we say they're old. So there is no upper bound here. It's just any number bigger than 60 or, or bigger than 59, technically, would make them old. But let's look at a potential problem in terms of how you may be used to implementing these things. Uh, or, or what we're going to do is compare how you think about this in the mathematical sense to how we need to write the code to do it. All right. So let's go side. So we're going to ultimately have to know the age. So I need to store the age. I will prompt the user for the age. What is your age? Push your mark, couple spaces in there. You scan F to get that age. Right. And let's just look at the first part of that. So we, we say if 0 less than or equal to age, less than 20, if they're in that range, they're young. And then for right now, we'll say else not young. So let's see what happens. So C89, yeah, let's see, run it, put in 13. Oops, I got too many statements over here, sorry. Let's do that again, compile it, run it, put in 13. It says they're young, which is true, because it's between zero and 20. Let's try a different age, 50. Oh, it says that's young. 100, that's young. Minus 34, that's young. How can all of these be young? Let's look and see how this is actually interpreted and then uh, we'll better understand what the problem is and then know how to fix it as well. So let's return to our precedence table. Look down here. Here's the Inequalities, less than, less than or equal, greater than, greater than or equal. And it says these are process left to right. All right. So when we get something like this in a math class, zero less than or equal to age, less than 20, we think of age as being between zero and 20, right? But the problem is that in order for age to be between these things, which isn't wrong necessarily, so let's say age is 13. 13 is greater than or equal to zero, and it's less than 20, so it's between the two. But in order for that to be the case, there's two inequalities here. This has to be evaluated, and this has to be evaluated. So what the computer is doing in this case is first it's evaluating because remember we said that this is evaluated left or right so it evaluates zero less than or equal to age which is 13 or excuse me age is 13 so we get that this is true 13 is greater than or equal to zero so we get one and now it says evaluate one less than 20 that's also true so I get one so the overall if statement has if one and so it prints young. What happens if I put 100 in here? Well, now we have 0 less than or equal to 100, which is true. So this is replaced by 1. And once again, we have 1 is less than 20, which is true. So we get 1. So it prints that they're young. What if I put in the negative 34? zero less than or equal to minus 34. This is false, so it's replaced by zero. And now we have zero is less than 20, which is true. 
So we get one, so it prints the true young. So for this particular expression, if we write it that way, it's always going to evaluate as true. So what sh should we do about it? Well, we said that in order for this for age to be between these two boundaries, really there's two things that have to be true. It has to be true that zero is less than or equal to age, and age has to be less than 20. So this is how we need to really write it, where the and uses our logical and symbol, the two ampersands that I talked about in my uh, logical operators video. So this is how we need to really implement it, is to ask the two questions. And only when both questions are true is age in that range. So let's look at that. So back to this. So zero less than or equal to age and age less than 20. Let's see what's happened before we finish the rest of it. Minus 34 says you're not young, which for the way this is written, that would be what it would mean. 13, you're young. 50, you're not young. 100, you're not young. So it is looking to determine if age is in that range. So now that we know that, let's add the other uh, expressions. So we could do this a couple different ways. Uh, one way would be just do this. Have another if. So now this is 20. This was 60 from what we had before. And we didn't actually put an upper bound on it. Our middle's misspelled. All right, so now let's see what happens. Minus 34, doesn't print anything because it doesn't match any range. 13, you're young. 50, you're middle-aged. 100, and you're old. So it's fine to do this, but if one of these is true, the other two cannot be true. So there's really no reason to keep asking questions because here's how the computers don't work. It's going to ask this question, and if this is true, it's going to print young, but it's still going to come down and ask this question, which now has to be false, so it's going to come down and ask this question, which also has to be false in this case. So it's really additional work that we don't need to have the computer doing. I mean, you can, you don't notice the difference in terms of time, but if you remember back to my introduction video, I said you should still think about different criteria by which you might indicate that one program is better than another, and technically this is a performance hit. We are asking the computer to do more work than necessary. So if I was going to implement it this way, I really would probably do this. Else, we can, the space doesn't matter. But I'm going to say, if this is true, do this. Else, now ask the follow-up question. And if it's true, do this. Else, I can ask the follow-up question. But remember what we wrote over here. We said that if this is true, do this. If this is true, do this. If we know, it, it depends on what we know. If we know the person's never going to enter something less than zero, well then failing these two conditions automatically means they have to be greater than or equal to 60. Which means we could just simply say else at the end. If I know the person will always enter a valid age, meaning no negative numbers, well then I could simply just say this and it would work. Let's try that out. Compile it again. Run it, 13, let's see, 24, that makes you middle-aged based on that, 60, you're old, 100, you're old. But for the way this is written, the one problem with it, like I said, is this. Remember, if I write it like this, this is my default. It's when this is false, 
and then this is false, but then it stumbles down to this, that finally it says this, which wouldn't be correct. So you may choose to leave this in here. So now if I compile it, it doesn't print anything if I say minus 34, while still getting that 100 is old. 60, 34, middle age, 10, you're young. So that works. Before we see an alternate way of doing this, let's talk about bugs. So it's very easy to actually do something like this. So this was zero less than or equal to 20 and less than 20, or excuse me, zero is less than or equal to age and age is less than 20, but it'd be very easy to accidentally do this. Where I say age less than 20 and then I say age greater than 20 here. Let's see what happens if I do that. 13, you're young. 24, you're middle aged. 20, doesn't match anything because of the way I have it written. So when you're testing your code, you should think about what we'd call boundary conditions. So this really should be this. Test here uh, on the boundary conditions. It's, what does that mean? It's easy to find numbers in the range. It's at the boundaries where I'm most likely to have an error. Because if you go back to the error I had a moment ago where I had less than 20 and 20 less than age, it's at the boundary of 20 that I have a problem. Putting 13 in there is never going to accidentally be a problem. And likewise here for 60, it'd be easy to have a boundary issue. So while it's fine to test with things like 13 and 54 and 100, the boundaries for this particular situation are where I most likely see a bug. All right, let's see an alternate way of doing this. Keep in mind that going back to my original version where I had if and if and if without the else's, when I did that, we said that for the way I had this written, if this is true, the others can't be true. And if the middle one was true, they, the other three or other two can't be true. And if the last one was true, the other two can't be true. But we could do something like this. So in those cases, I didn't actually need the else's. We said this was fine. Let me put some spaces to make it easier to read. But now let's do this. Version. We could do this, say if zero, if we want to catch the other, zero is less than or equal to uh, age and well, it depends on what we do about the, the 34 actually. So let's do this. So I'm actually going to say here, age, well now let's go ahead and send that, let's send it equal to age, and age is less than 20, we print young. Else, if this fails, right, and this version is assuming, let's put that in here, or wrong type of comment style. So we'll make the assumption they do use the program correctly. So if we do that, I can actually trim this down to this. Age less than 20, print to the young, else. Now I do have to have the else if age less than 40, or excuse me, it was 60 was our boundary. Primitive aged. Else 
That's all this still should be as well. Let's see what happens. 13, young and young, 20, middle-aged, middle-aged, 60, makes you old. So they both get the same results. So how's this work? Well, now here I have to have the else's because you don't want to treat each of these individually. If I did, if I changed it into this, well, now 13 is less than 20, but it's also less than 60. So it would cause both of these print statements to print. So I only want to ask the, this question that you're less than 60 if it not true that you're less than 20. And then if it fails both of these, then it defaults to that you must be owed. So there's just different ways of doing it. Let's look at another problem. So let me clean this up. So in this problem, we want a prompt for a year. And decide if it is a leap year. And I'm doing this video in 2020, which happens to be a leap year. Now, most people probably realize that in order for a year to be a leap year, it has to be evenly divisible by four. And it is true that if a year is not evenly divisible by four, it's not a leap year. But it turns out it's actually a little more complex if the year is evenly divisible by four. There's some additional rules we have to consider. If a year is evenly divisible by four, but not evenly divisible by 100, then it is a leap year. But if a, if a year is evenly divisible by four and evenly divisible by 100, then it also has to be evenly divisible by 400 to be a leap year. So divisible by four, divisible by 100, divisible by 400 means it's a leap year. All right, so what are some examples? 1999 is not evenly divisible by four, so not a leap year. Two thousand is divisible by four, divisible by one hundred, and divisible by four hundred. So it's a leap year. Um, will be another example here. Nineteen hundred. We'll put that in here. Keep them in order. Nineteen hundred divisible by four and divisible by 100, but it's not divisible by 400, so it's not a leap year. And finally, 2020 is divisible by four, but not 100, so it is a leap year. So let's create a truth table that incorporates these ideas and then figure out how we're going to implement that. So we'll have divisible by four, 100, 400. So there's three different possibilities here and each of these has a true or false value. So we're going to have eight possibilities, but in a moment we'll see that some of these aren't actually possible. But if I'm just generating the true table, I'm going to have true, 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 false, 
true, false, true, true, false, 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 true, true, false, true, false, 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 true, false, false, false. And then we can have uh, an example here in this column, the example year. And then whether or not it's a leap year. All right. And in a moment, we'll actually add some notes. But let's look through these possibilities. So when I'm just generating the true table, since there's three variables here, and each takes on two possible values, that means I have to have eight combinations of true and false. But not all of these are actually possible. Because what we need to keep in mind is that 100 is equal to 4 times 25, which means any year that's divisible by 100 is automatically divisible by 4. And 400 is equal to 4 times 100. So any year automatically divisible by 400 has to be divisible by both 4 and 100. So... Let's look at this line here. This says a year is divisible by four, not divisible by 100, but is divisible by 400. Well, that's not possible because if it's divisible by 400, it has to be divisible by 100. So this line can't even exist, all right? Now, is it possible the year is divisible by four, 100, and 400? Sure. We said that with 2000, and that was a leap year. Is it possible for a year to be divisible by four and 100, but not 400? Sure, 1900's an example, but that's not a leap year, okay? True, false, false. That's a year such as 2020. And that's a leap year. And then we say, okay, is it possible for a year to not be divisible by four but divisible by 100 or 400? No. So this isn't possible. Divisible by four, or excuse me, not divisible by four and not 400, but divisible by 100. Once again, if it's divisible by 100, it has to be divisible by four, so that's not possible. Divisible by 400, but not the other two? No, that's not possible. Is it possible for a year to not be divisible by four, 100, or 400? Yes, such as 1999. And that's not a leap year. So we have two possibilities based upon the true table of being a leap year. Divisible by four, but not 100 or 400, or divisible by four, divisible by 100, and divisible by 400. So let's see how to implement this. So we'll see two different ways of doing this. One, where we simply take the four possible lines, because this line's done, this line's not possible. So that is a valid possibility. That's a valid combination, valid combination. So it's four of these. So let's implement these and see how it works. And then we'll see an arguably better approach that's more compact. So I'll prompt the user for a year, and that's an int. Remember, scan F doesn't tell me what it wants, so I'm going to ask for it. Year, question mark. All right. So let's do the very explicit way that uses a truth table. If, well, let's talk first of all, how do we know if something's divisible by four? Well, to say that a number is divisible by 4 means that 4 divides evenly into it. And to determine that, we can actually use the modulus operator. So let's check this first. So year mod 4, or let's check and see what we get first. F. And let's do year mod 4.
Let's put one in there. We get one. Two. Get two. Three. Get three. Four. Get zero. Five. Get one. Six. Get two. Seven. Get three. Eight. Get zero. So each time I have a year that's evenly divisible by four, I get zero. Because remember what the modulus operator gives us. It gives us the remainder from the division. So four divides evenly into four, right? It goes exactly one time, leaving zero's remainder. But when I divide five by four, it goes in there one time, leaving a remainder of one. Six divided by four, four will go into six one time, leaving a remainder of two. Continue down, four goes exactly two times into eight, so there's no remainder. So in order to check for divis divisibility, I want to check and see if the result of applying the modulus operator gives us zero. So once again, if we're doing the explicit version, let's put a comment in here. Explicit version based on truth table. If your mod four equals zero and your mod, uh, space doesn't really matter, but I like it for readability, mod 100 equals zero and your mod um, 400 equals zero Let's say Z is a leap year. Let's go back and look at the true table again. If this is true, and this is true, and this is true, yes, it's a leap year. All right. Let's look at our precedence table again, just to confirm that I can write it like this. So where are operators at? Here's logical end, and here's the modulus operator. So that says it's going to evaluate year mod four first, replace that with a numerical value, which we saw were zero, one, two, or three in this case. It's going to compare those using equality. So it, it compares that to zero. If it gets zero, such as eight mod four, then it's true, so it puts in a true value there of one, and that's what would be in the expression. So over here, when the year is eight, this right here becomes zero, zero is equal to zero, so this is replaced with one, so I have one and whatever the truth value is for the others. That's how that works. So let's put in the other expressions. Now, do I need an else here? Not technically but I can if I want. But let's write it out very explicitly. So my truth table said that in terms of things, years, combinations that are possible, in terms, I mean, in terms of the truth value, we said it was possible to be divisible by four, divisible by 100, but not divisible by 100. So I would write it as not equal to zero. And this says, this is not a leap year. All right. So we had true, false, false as another possibility. So divisible by four, not divisible by 100, not divisible by 400. That was a leap year. And then finally, we said it's not divisible by any of the three. So not divisible by four, not divisible by 100, not divisible by 400 is not a leap year. So let's see what happens. So let's try our years. We said that 2000 is a leap year. Get that. 1900 is not a leap year. 2020 is a leap year. 
and 1999 is not a leap year. So it works. So this is based upon the truth table. Once again, it looks like this. True, true, true. True, true, false. True, false, false. False, false, false. What would have happened if we'd implemented the other things? Well, they can't even exist, so they all just would have been labeled as not leap years. But we can't actually get these combinations. But this is very explicit, matches the, the, the truth table. But we can actually tighten this up quite a bit. So if we go back and look, let's make some notes on our truth table. So if we're looking at the two possibilities, that's here, this is a leap year, uh, this is not a leap year, not a leap year, leap year. A couple of these can actually be simplified. Um, so if, an, if a year is divisible by 400, then it means it's automatically divisible by four and both 100. So in this case, let me get a different pen. In this case, I can actually just check for 400. Because if it passes the test that is divisible by 400, it's automatically divisible by 4 and 100. And if I wanted to check for this last one explicitly, I could check if it's divisible by 4. If the answer is no, it's not divisible by 4, well, it can't be divisible by 100 or 400. So in this one, I could simply just check for 4. And then uh, if something is divisible by 4 and divisible by 100, but not divisible by 400, then it's a leap year. So I can check and see that something is divisible by four, but not divisible by 100. It's automatically not divisible by 400 because of the 100 failure. So here I can just check whether or not it's divisible by four and divisible by 100. But if something passes this test for a leap year or this test for a leap year, then it can't be one of the other two possibilities. So let's see how we can tighten this program up quite a bit from what we had before. So this was version one. Let's look at version two. Tight version of code. So here I'm gonna say if year mod 400 is equal to zero, or year mod four equals zero, and year mod 100 is not equal to zero, then it's a leap year. Else, it's not a leap year. Do I need parentheses in here? It would certainly be fine if to make it more clear, but let's look at the precedence table once again. This shows that logical and has higher precedence than logical or. So that means the way it's going to look at this is that, remember, these, this right here has higher precedence than and, and this has higher precedence than and. So this is evaluated, this evaluated, and then the and of the two results is evaluated. And then that's combined with the or for what this evaluates to. So this is evaluated, this evaluated, this evaluated, then the and is evaluated, and finally the or is evaluated. So let's see if I have all this written right. If a year is evenly divisible by 400, that means it's divisible by 400, 100, and four automatically, that would give me a leap year. Or if a year is divisible by four, but not 100 or 400, but if it's not divisible by 100, it means it can't be divisible by 400 either. So I simply just check for the two, divisible by four, but not divisible by 100, that should make a leap year. Otherwise, if it fails 
this or this, then it comes down here and says, okay, or it fails both of those, excuse me, because if either of these is true, it's a leap year. But if it fails both, then this whole statement's false, comes down to else and says it's not a leap year. So let's see what happens. 1999, not a leap year in both cases for both sets of code. Say 1900, not a leap year, 2000, leap year, 2020, leap year. So both versions do the same thing. Many people would prefer the second version because it's a lot tighter and that tends to impress people more. But then also the consideration that the more code you have, the more opportunity for bugs. So I could probably test this with less effort than I did the top, but um, either, either one's gonna work. And if I didn't really wanna ask it, every one of these questions, I could put else's here saying, well, if this is true, do this else. Now I ask if this is true, do this else, if I ask this question. So I don't need to ask all these questions every time by using else's. I'm just showing you some variety. So there's two applications of conditionals. And conditionals are important in lots of programs because we just need to be able to ask questions and say, well, do this if this is true, or don't do this if this is true, or whatever.